cells of your body are consciousness too of course so there is a so law of attraction is responding to their vibration just law, law of attraction is responding to the vibration of the thoughts that you're thinking with your mind stay with us you're really gonna like this so we want to reintroduce the word momentum to this conversation because there is cellular momentum mm -hmm. and we think that's a better description than cellular memory because even though you could effectively say it's the same thing it's a momentum it's a habit of response yes. Yes. the most important thing that we want to say about your cellular momentum is that with your conscious mind you have such control over this cellular momentum but most people don't exercise it most people are responding to the way their body feels rather than telling their body the way they want it to feel right. so once you get out ahead of this and you see this you've seen this with athletes you know that it is mind over matter that it is a you see them doing things that physical beings haven't ought to be able to do that easily and yet they can't always do it every single time because their mindset is not adjusted in just that way but it could be you see which is what we work on so if we were visiting with them we would say to them your body is responding somewhat out of habit out of cellular memory but you can dictate to those cells the memory that you want them to hold mm, I like that. Yeah. and once they get that squared away and they begin to watching the response of their body to their thoughts a lot of the inspiration the in other words when when anyone not just an athlete but when anyone gets into perfect vibrational concert with their source energy that's when the thought extends from that pure positive powerful place right through into the cellular body imagine that your contrasting experience has caused you to give birth to yet another amended desire so imagine that this desire is out there in your future experience and you are moving toward it with every thought word and action that you're offering but you know that every subject is really two subjects it's like picking up a stick that has two ends on it the subject of wellness wellness on one end sickness on the other the subject of financial abundance plenty of money on one end not enough on the other relationships feeling really good on one end not feeling so good on the other so every subject is like a stick with two ends so out there in your future is a big long stick called financial abundance and right now where all of your power is you're having an experience which is causing you to offer mental or verbal commentary so as you say things or focus on things that feel sort of good to you you begin progressing toward the end of the stick that will please you when you get there but as you say things that don't feel so good you begin proceeding toward the end of the stick that won't feel so good when you get there there are some of you who say something that feels pretty good and something that feels pretty bad and something that feels pretty good and something that feels pretty bad something that feels pretty good and something that feels pretty bad so your proximity to what you really want or what you really don't want doesn't close it's sort of like you've got this option right now to fork off in the direction of what feels good or to fork off in the direction of what doesn't feel so good and we see you sometimes you do a pretty good job of forking toward what you want until you have lunch with someone and then you fork in the direction of what you don't want and <laughs> and then you regain your balance and you fork more back in the direction of what you want and then you watch television you fork off in the direction of what you don't want and then you get hopeful about something you begin looking for positive aspects and you fork off in the direction of what you want and then your bills come and you fork off in the direction of what you don't want and what we're wanting you to understand is that you have control about the direction in which you fork but we want you to be forking because of the way it makes you feel not because of what's happening right now in your red hot moment in other words as you let this be a vibrational emotional journey as you mentally see yourself 
proceeding toward the corner that has what you are wanting in it rather than the corner who has what you do not want in it, what begins to happen is as you make the decision that right now from wherever I am, and it doesn't matter where you were before, all of your power is right now. In other words, your ability to begin moving toward or away from, toward what you want or toward what you don't want, is all right here, right now. And what happens as you compare where you are to any others in terms of manifestation, you lose your place relative to what you're doing with your vibration. But when you make it an emotional journey rather than an action journey, and you reach for the best feeling thoughts that you can find, what begins to happen is you begin gradually leaning in the direction of what you are wanting until you just become one who is so clearly expecting, anticipating things to go your way that even when something appears to not be going your way, you know that nothing's wrong, that you're just not understanding everything because it really is going your way because after all, things always go your way. And eventually what begins to happen is people begin to notice you and they begin to reflect back to you why is it that things always seem to go your way and you will tell them I learned how to fork off in the direction <laughs> of what feels best I began to accept the power in every moment and we think that many of you don't realize the power that you have in every moment and we want you to leave this gathering really understanding that it is really a matter of in this now where you have all of your power of making such peace with where you are that you begin forking in the direction of what feels good. An image comes to mind of someone who is standing at the cresting waters of a raging river and the bulldozers are all there trying to shore up the banks of this river, trying to save this woman's home. But the floodwaters have been rising and the people on the bulldozer can see that they are a very incompatible match to the water that is raising. And when you see the television camera pointed at the woman and you see her fretting as it seems inevitable that this water, this current, is going to sweep her home away, we want to say to her, so be it. It is the inevitable result of the flow that is in place. Don't try to fight against the inevitability of the flow that is in place. Instead, relax into it, let it wash you out to sea, and then regroup and start forking in the direction of what you are wanting. And we want you to understand that we know that sometimes our words about vibration and our words about cheer up and our words about lean in the direction that feels better feel like very paltry small response to raging waters that are on the brink or even happening in terms of manifestation. But we want you to understand that you cannot with your action fight the current that you have been offering vibrationally. The current that you've been offering vibrationally is what's happening. Don't you think that it is time that with all subjects, even like the subject of medicine, that people begin to approach it from the causation stage rather than from the trying to build a higher dike stage. And we can understand why surgery or medicine might soothe when you are in that place of trauma, but it's a small soothing and it doesn't change anything really until you get back to the heart of the vibration that caused you to be in that predicament to begin with. You don't have to go back and undo anything. You can stand right where you are and utilize the guidance system that is within you that is lovingly knowing everything that you are and everything that you want in relationship to where you are vibrationally about it that is giving you vibrational feedback in every moment to help you know the vibrational relationship between these two powerful points of vibrational relativity. Isn't that good to know? So what somebody else thinks is irrelevant in this, isn't it? What somebody else has manifested is irrelevant in that. So what you're wanting to do is collect the data that makes you close the gap. And sometimes we see you seeming to deliberately collect the data that widens the gap. And we understand why you do it. Anytime you're standing in a place apart from who you are, 
you can feel that something's gone terribly wrong. And there is this feeling of wanting to justify to someone why things are not better than they should be. And so as you drum up or amplify or gather the statistics of what has gone wrong in order to support your position of being where you don't want to be, we're wanting to say to you, not helpful. <laughs> and nobody, nobody that matters in terms of source or in terms of your vibrational relationship cares about how you got there. Magellan never says, where have you been? It is irrelevant. The only thing that matters is, where am I in relationship to where I want to be? It's simple, isn't it? Simple to hear, simple conceptually. And in time, it will become simple to you as you stand in the moment of negative emotion and you say, I'm marching, marching, marching towards something that when I get there, I'm not going to like. Now, I can change my course of action now, or I can tempt fate a little more and see how far I can actually march before it manifests. I can continue to justify or I can continue to wallow in my discomfort because after all, I've done it quite a long time and nothing that really bad has happened. And we say, you get to choose and no one is unhappy if you receive manifestations that are different from what you want. But we do want you to know that your true joy only ever will ever only come when you are a vibrational match to who you really are. You can't have become this bright, shining new being with all these bright, shining new ideas and be over here, not yet a vibrational match to it and really be in your ultimate joy. So the optimum creative experience is for the contrast to continually give birth to new intentions and you to just continually reach for the best feeling thought that you can find so that you become steadily a vibrational match to the new intentions. And then the way your life plays out is you don't feel frustration about what's not yet manifested. Instead, you feel the life-giving qualities of these new intentions that are summoning life through you. You are eternal beings and you cannot be eternal and complete at the same time. They do not go together. If you are eternal, then you are growing. And if you are growing, then there's stuff not yet done. And if there's stuff not yet done, then you are incomplete. But when you are incomplete and happily optimistic, now you are living life in the way you did from your non-physical vantage point when you decided to jump into this time-space reality. You said there'll be plenty of things that I adore, plenty of things that I don't like so much, and out of all of that will be born my unique intentions for me. And Source says, and when you find them big or small, we'll be right there with you because no one better than you can decide from your vantage point. And when you decide, we'll be there, and you'll have guidance that will let you know whether you're there or not. We're done. Go to the beach. <laughs> So, you have some things you want to talk about. We see our value to you in helping you to close the vibrational gap. We do not see our value in the way some of you have been approaching life. Humans often, when they see a condition that makes them feel good, they vote for more conditions like that. And when they see a condition that causes them to feel bad, then they push against and try to eradicate the earth from those conditions. And what we're wanting you to understand is in, this is an attraction-based universe. It is all about inclusion. When you give your attention to something wanted and say yes to it, you include it in your vibration. When you see something you do not want and you shout no at it, you include it in your vibration. So there is no such thing as no in this vibrationally-based universe. We see our value to you in assisting you, not in trying to figure out how to change the condition so that you can feel better in response to the condition. That's conditional love, isn't it? I feel love under these conditions, but not under those conditions. And we say, no, that's not who you are. Who you are is love. You feel love under all conditions, which means you have the ability to focus your mind in such a way that you stay in vibrational concert with that which is love, with that which is source. You don't need to demand that conditions change. And so sometimes you'll want to talk about something your son is doing or something your mother is doing or something that your employer is doing. And if they would do it differently, you would feel better. And you think that you're questions to us are about how you can work the energy just right to make them do the things that when they do them then you will be able to observe them and you will feel better and we say 
surgery we understand, medicine we understand, bulldozers on the dike we understand, and we understand your motivation for wanting to do that. We do understand trying to keep your head above water just for one more moment while you get another breath of air, but what we are really wanting you to understand is that unless you do something about your vibrational countenance, nothing can change. Nothing long term will change, that's certain. Haven't you found it interesting that a new disease pops up and humanity finds the cure only to find another disease popping up? Don't you think it's interesting that you don't get to the end of those diseases? And the reason you don't is because you have not yet got to the end of pushing against things.